Hello and welcome to this video on counting by multiplying. Now let's just say that we want to form a two letter word and the first letter is allowed to be A, B or C and the second letter is allowed to be D or E. Now how many words can we form? And I put that in kind of quotes by the way because it doesn't necessarily have to be a word in a dictionary. I just mean any sequence of two letters where the first letter is one of these and the second letter is one of these. Well, if we fix the first letter, let's just say that if we fix the first letter as A, then the second letter could be D or E. So we could have A, D or A, E. Or if we fix the first letter as B, we could have B, D or B, E. And if we fix the first letter as C, we could have C, D or C, E. It's a bit like multiplying out brackets, where you're choosing one thing from the first bracket and one thing from the second bracket. Now, how many possibilities did we have in total for the number of two-letter words? Well, we can see there's six possibilities. And you might wonder, um, how can we get the number of possibilities by using the number of choices here and the number of choices here? Well, we had three choices for the first letter and two choices for the second letter. And you notice that three times two is six, which is the total number of possible words we had. So it seems like if we multiply the number of choices we had in each case together, then that gives us the total number of combinations when we combine those things. So let's write that down. To get the number of possible combinations from a number of independent selections, and by independent, I mean that what your choice of letter is for the first letter doesn't influence what you choose for the second letter. They're independent of each other. Just multiply the number of choices for each selection. Now let's do some examples, and I've purposely chosen slightly similar examples to illustrate the different types of question you might get. So question one, class A has 30 students and class B 20 students. I need to choose a form captain from each form. How many possible selections are there? Well, how many choices do we have from class A? Well, we have 30 choices from class A. And then independently, we can choose someone from class B. So how many choices do we have from class B? Well, we've got 20 students we can choose from. And so the total number of combinations would just be 30 times 20, which is equal to 600. So there's 600 possible combinations where we choose someone from class A to be form captain and someone from class B. What about question T? In class C, 30 students, I need a form captain and a deputy form captain. How many possible combinations are there? Well, how many choices are there for the form captain first? Well, we've got a choice of 30 students. And then, this is where it gets a bit more complicated, how many choices do we have for the deputy form captain? Well, if we've already chosen the form captain, we have one less person to choose from because we can't choose the same person twice for form captain and deputy form captain. So we're going to be multiplying by 29. There's only 29 people we can choose. And so we get 30 times 29, which is equal to 870. In the previous question, we didn't have to subtract one because we're choosing from two separate classes. And who we chose from class A doesn't change the number of people we can choose from in class B. What about the third one? This is uh, more complicated. In class C again, I require two people from those 30 students to be selected for a prize. How many choices are there? Now, we initially might think it's the same answer as this. Well, we've got 30 choices for the first person to receive that prize, and then we've got 29 choices left for the second person to receive that prize. So we might initially think it's 30 times 29. However, the reason why it's different is that if you think about it, let's just say I chose Bob as my first person to receive the prize, and Sheila as the second person to receive the prize, now that would be exactly the same selection if I was to choose Sheila first to receive the prize and Bob to receive the second prize. But at the moment, both of these would be counted as separate possibilities because that's the number of choices for the first choice and the number of choices for the second choice. And you can see, and so these would be separate possibilities. But we only want this to count once. Bob and Sheila is the same as Sheila and Bob. And the way we resolve that is we divide by two to get rid of those duplicates. So each two possibilities only counts as one possibility. So that's going to be half of 870, which is going to be 435. 
So basically, if you don't care about the order of the people in your selection of two people, then you divide by two. But if you do care about the order, then you don't divide by two. So in this case, when we needed a form captain and a deputy form captain, if we had Bob as a form captain and Sheila as the deputy form captain, so let's say this is a form captain and this was a deputy form captain, can you see that would be different than if Sheila was a form captain and Bob was the deputy form captain. That would be a different scenario. So we do want to count both of them, and so we wouldn't divide by two in that particular case. That's the key, crucial difference. Do we care about the order of the two things? Right, the last one, I saw a question in a mock paper, um, very similar to this. In a class D of 17 boys and 13 girls, I need to make a list of three students, either two boys followed by a girl, like this, so boy, boy, girl, or two girls followed by a boy, so girl, girl, boy. If order matters, and by that I mean that listing, say, Sheila and Sharon for the two girls would be different from Sharon and Sheila. So how many lists can I make? Well, let's consider each of the different types of lists. So we want to make boy, boy, girl first. All those lists. Well, how many choices for your first boy? Well, we've got 17 boys to choose from, so 17 multiplied by. How many choices do we have for the second boy on the list? Now, presuming that we can't choose the same boy twice, uh, we only have 16 boys left to choose from. And then how many choices of girl do we have for the third person in the list? Well, 13 girls, so it's 13. So that's going to be 17 times 16 times 13 is 3, 5, 3, 6. And then we could also make these lists, so we can have a girl first, so we've got 13 choices for girl. And then for the second girl, again, presuming that we can't pick the same girl twice, we've got 12 left girls to choose from. And then how many boys can we choose from? Well, we've got 17 boys, so we've got this. So we put that on our calculator, 13 times 12 times 17 is 2,652. Now you then might think, well, how do we combine these two numbers? Well, if we see the word or, if we can have these lists or we can have these lists, then we just add the two numbers together. That's a plus, sorry. 2, 6, 5, 2. And when we add those together, we get 6,188 possible lists. You might have seen this idea of or meaning plus and and meaning time somewhere before. In fact, you use that in probability. So if it's boy and boy and girl, we multiply those numbers, the boy and boy and girl, we multiply. And if we see the word or, then we just add the two number of combinations.